BYD is one of the largest, in fact, it's the third largest electric car brand on the face of the planet. I just ordered one here and very soon you'll be able to order one as well. So who are BYD? What are they about? And where do they come from? And why do I personally think that BYD CEO Wang Chan Fu is one of the big three, is one of the big five CEOs? Jim Farley, Elon Musk, Herbert Deese, Wang Chan Fu, and my mystery one is coming soon. Hello, my friends, and welcome to The Electric Viking. Here is the history or a short condensed history of BYD. I personally just bought a BYD Yen Plus. It's been changed. The name's been changed to the Addo 3 here in Australia and probably will be the same for most markets where they're sold outside of China. So you might be able to order a BYD very soon. Right now, they are the third largest electric vehicle company on the planet and they are the fourth largest battery manufacturing company. So who exactly are BYD and what are their plans for the future? Chinese car makers are well known for being ambitious and often domestically delivering on those ambitions, especially in 2021, when Chinese electric car manufacturers started to eat huge shares of legacy auto vehicle sales in China. One of the companies that has found traction both at home and abroad is BYD. They are absolutely smashing the Chinese car market and they are about to decimate car sales globally. They will disrupt legacy auto in a way that people just cannot possibly comprehend right now, but it's about to happen. Standing for build your dreams, BYD counts American billionaire Warren Buffett as one of its largest investors. Berkshire Hathaway own around 8% of BYD and they've owned it since 2008, not changing their position at all over the last 14 years. Now, BYD have just released their plans to sell vehicles. They plan on selling vehicles in Australia, in Europe, and in North America within the next couple of years. So how did BYD actually start? Well, Car Expert reports that Shenzhen, a Chinese city near Hong Kong, is well known for its electronics manufacturing. And it was here in 1995 that BYD was first founded by entrepreneur Wang Chanfu. Now, Wang actually was orphaned at a young age and he was brought up by his brother and sister, which is quite an incredible story in and of itself. I'll put a link in the description below to the video I made about his life history. While he had a background in material science and chemistry and related experience in academia, with the Chinese government trialing capitalism in Shenzhen at the time, Chang Fu made the bold step to compete with the flux of Japanese companies exporting rechargeable batteries at the time by starting his own battery firm. It's quite interesting, isn't it? This is kind of the beginning of China basically taking most of the rechargeable battery market away from Japan. Nobody's even mentioned this fact that this is actually what's happened over the last two decades. Thus, BYD was founded as a maker of rechargeable batteries, and it grew rapidly becoming a major supplier of batteries to various different mobile phone manufacturers. In fact, that's still where the majority of the company's profit comes from, assembling mobile phone handsets and providing the batteries that go into them as well. Subsequently, Chang Fu wished to enter into a new market for his batteries and sensing the possibility of vehicles eventually being powered with electricity, he decided to make a risky move. He bought a struggling Chinese car maker, Quin Chan Auto, renamed to BYD Automobile as a way to enter the automotive industry and learn how to scale up the mass production of cars. Now, interestingly, he's since bought a number of different car factories from companies that have gone bankrupt in China. He basically takes over the factory, BYD takes over, and what this means is they don't have to build a new factory and they actually buy them much cheaper than what it will cost to build. Chinese companies are often known to be fast followers. BYD was no exception. By reverse engineering and then building the tooling and molds required to make a particular part in-house, the firm was able to draw on the expertise of foreign car makers initially to build derivative models before incrementally making their own improvements. I remember one story that I read a couple of years ago. Wang actually got his team to go and buy a brand new Mercedes S-Class. This was at a time in BYD was still in its infancy, all the way back in 2001, I believe it was. They brought the S-Class in and then Wang said to them, okay, take it apart, re-engineer it, 
rebuild it, see how they do it. Let's let's figure out how we can re-engineer this, this car. And he's, the engineers who had just bought the car for him said, this, this is a brand new Mercedes S-Class. We can't do that, boss. So Wang walked over to the car, pulled out his keys, and scratched the entire car with his keys. And he said, it's not new anymore. Do it. And so they did. And they've done that numerous times since. Using parts and knowledge from Japanese car makers such as Mitsubishi and Toyota to mass produce combustion engine models, BYD pivoted to EVs with the launch of the BYD E6 electric people mover all the way back in 2010. Now I actually test drove one of those cars late last year when they were, it was delivered to a customer, well, one of the first customers here in Australia. And I've got to say the E6, the E6 battery powered E6, for the price is one of the most, if not the most impressive car I've ever seen. Today, BYD has a market capitalization of US $104 billion, making it more valuable than established brands such as Mercedes-Benz, Ford, General Motors, and BMW. But this is just the start. In addition to cars, the company also produces a range of commercial vehicles such as EV buses, forklifts, and trucks. However, BYD's original business of manufacturing batteries for mobile phones has been spun off into a separate company, BYD Electronics, which now also manufactures various medical devices and computer components. But this firm maintains a close relationship with BYD Automobile, and the two entities continue to share a logo and branding. In addition, BYD became the fourth largest battery manufacturer in the world last year, and the second largest producer of lithium iron phosphate batteries, or LFP batteries. They're now famous for the blade battery, which utilizes this technology. One of the great things about blade batteries, well, they don't set on fire. It's almost impossible to get them to set on fire. Big advantage. BYD has further increased its prominence recently by attracting high profile investors, most famously Warren Buffett, who bought a 10% stake in the company in late 2008 for 232 million US dollars. That was one of his best investments ever. It's returned him more than 500% since. BYD's current model portfolio consists of both dual mode plug-in hybrids and battery electric vehicles. They've pivoted away from petrol vehicles or gas vehicles entirely. Last year, only 5% of the vehicles that they sold were gas powered. This year, it's dropped down to 2%. The year before that, it was closer to 40. So in a very short space of time, BYD has transitioned from petrol powered vehicles to almost entirely electric. Now the company has largely limited sales of its plug-in hybrid range to the Chinese domestic market, whilst its battery electric vehicles are sold at home and overseas. One of the firm's most recent launches is the Tesla Model 3 rivaling BYD Han EV sedan. This vehicle offers 362 kilowatt of power in its range topping Supreme trim. It also has a claim range of 605 kilometers on the NED cycle, and the new version actually now has a claim range of more than 700 kilometers. All Han EV sedans make use of a 80 kilowatt hour LFP lithium iron phosphate battery. This uses BYD's innovative blade battery. One of the big advantages of the blade battery is it utilizes cell to pack technology to optimize energy density, whilst also elongating the cells into beams that then become essential to the structural integrity of the pack, reducing weight and production costs. BYD also claims that its blade battery is safer than the battery pack designs used in other EVs with regard to thermal stability and fire risk. The company has creatively demonstrated this by piercing the battery pack with a nail and then placing a raw egg on top of the piercing. The company claims that the lack of fire or smoke and the fact that the egg remains uncooked helps evidence the crashworthiness of the battery. BYD claims its battery design has also been put through other tests such as being crushed, overcharged and placed in a furnace without exploding or catching fire and run over by a truck by the way as well. Other EVs currently being produced by BYD include the older, Chin Pro sedan based on an adapted internal combustion engine chassis, as well as the Song Pro and the Tang electric SUVs. The Tang SUV is actually sold in Norway and comes with seven seats and the Blade battery as well. Potentially the company's most important car is the one I just ordered. 
That's the Yen Plus EV, or the Addo 3 here in Australia. Sized in line with SUVs such as the Audi Q3 and the BMW X3, this model will go on sale in Australia here in only a few months' time. Now, the Addo 3, or the Yen Plus, will make use of the BYD Blade battery and come at a starting price of 44,000 Australian dollars, around about 32,000 US dollars. It will offer 320 kilometers of range in its base variation and 420 kilometers in the long range variant using a 60 kilowatt hour LFP blade battery pack. However, probably the most important car for BYD, period, globally, is the BYD EA1, called the BYD Dolphin. BYD began selling that vehicle in October of 2021, and sales have climbed enormously since. It's become its second best-selling EV after ramping up production, and it will eventually become one of the best-selling electric vehicles, maybe one of the best-selling cars, period, in the world within the next couple of years. At least that's what BYD plans. Previously, BYD claimed to be selling the T3 and the E6 vehicles here in Australia. In fact, they only sold a few of them because they only had a limited number of right-hand drive vehicles. And, and to be honest, the reality is right now BYD is struggling to meet the incredible demand they have for their vehicles in China. Now, BYD plans on selling more than 1.5 million EVs this year. It sold over 600,000 last year, and it plans on hitting 3.5 million in 2025. Currently listed on the Hong Kong Stock Exchange, BYD is the fourth largest automaker in the world by market capitalization, producing more than 1.5 million vehicles over the last three years, with a record 604,000 units sold in 2021, with the majority of those, of course, being EVs or plug-in hybrids. Now, one of the crazy, scary things about BYD is the fact that they are able to build factories so, so quickly. Last year, they actually built six factories in China most of those being battery factories. And they increased their battery production by more than 200% in 12 months. That's incredible. Currently, there's very few Western media outlets talking about BYD, period. Imagine if this company was located in the United States. Everyone would have heard of them. But it probably won't be long before that happens anyway, considering the current meteoric rise they are on. Let me know in the comment section below what you think of BYD. Will you consider buying one? What do you think of the brand? What do you think of Chinese EVs in general? Thanks for watching, and I'll see you again on the next one. Bye-bye.